Your kingdom reigns, Lord, forever. Your kingdom reigns, Lord, forever. Your kingdom reigns, Lord, forever. Would you reign in justice? 
Would you reign in righteousness? Would you reign in justice?
in my knees they bow with my knees I bow with my knees I bow with my heart I believe with my heart I believe it's with my heart I believe with my mouth I confess and with my mouth I confess it's with my you are the Lord, you are the Lord, you are the Lord, you are the Lord, with my knees I bow, with my knees I bow, this Lord with Holy, holy is the Lord, hallelujah. Holy, holy is the Lord, Father, we bless you by your only begotten Son, Jesus. Father, we praise you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we worship you in spirit and in truth, for you have given to us this life, oh God, to do so, ha, this joy to know so, ha, hallelujah, this love to interact with you, Lord. I will praise you, oh God. I will sing praises to you, oh Lord. In the midst of your people, I sing praise to you. Lord, we praise you. Hallelujah. 
Just lift up your voice. Begin to cry out. Begin to praise him with tongues and interpretation of tongues with prophecy, with songs and hymns and spiritual songs. Sing and make melody. Sing and make melody. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we give thanks unto you. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God. Holy is the Lord. Ha. Hallelujah. Ha. Ha. Holy is the Lord. Your body may be in pain. You can break right through the pain, right through the pain as you praise. Ha, ha, hallelujah. You may be feel, you maybe you feel a little left out and, and unwanted. You can break through all of that s stuff. <laughs> as you begin to lift up your voice in thanksgiving to the Father. Lift up your voice in thanksgiving to the Son. What are you going to say? Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice in thanksgiving. Lift up your voice in thanksgiving to the Father. Lift up your voice in thanksgiving to the Son. Lift up your voice in thanksgiving to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come take over everything. Holy Spirit, you desire. Come and rule and come and reign. Holy Spirit, we yield our members unto you, God. Our spirit, soul, and body. Huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, I come boldly by the blood of Jesus. Say it. I come boldly by the blood of Jesus through this new and living way, through this new and living way, by the Spirit of grace, by the Spirit of grace, by the Spirit of truth, by the Spirit of truth, by the Holy Ghost who's been given, by the Holy Ghost who's been given. Ha. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord, oh, praise the Lord, oh, my soul, oh, praise the Lord, oh, praise the Lord, oh, my soul. 
Oh, praise the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, praise the Lord, oh praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. generation Lord you are the shelter my shelter from the storm my shelter in every generation Lord you are the shelter, hallelujah, my shelter. Hallelujah. My shelter. Blessed is your name, Lord. Shelter from the storm. Shield against the enemy, shelter from the storm. Shield against the enemy, shelter from the storm. Shield against my enemy. 
shelter from the storm. Shield against thy enemy. Shelter from the storm. In every generation, Lord. You are the shelter from the storm. You are my shelter. You are my shelter. You are my shield against my enemy. My glory and the lifter of my head. You are my glory, Lord. My glory and the lifter of my head. Ha <laughs> ha. Thou, O oh Lord, are a shield to me. Are you, O oh Lord, are a shield to me? You're my glory and the lifter of my head. O oh, thou, O oh Lord, are a shield to me. Shelter to me, shelter from the storm. Shelter to me, and shelter from the storm. You are my light and my life. You are my glory and the lifter of my head. Uh -huh. You are my light and my life. Hallelujah. You are my glory and the lifter of my head. <laughs> Woo. You are my light and my life. <laughs> you are my glory and the lifter of my head. You are my light and my life. You are my glory and the lifter of my head. You are my Savior and Redeemer. Yes, come on. You are my Savior and Redeemer. You are my Savior and Redeemer. You are my Savior and Redeemer. Come on. You are my Savior and Redeemer. Hallelujah. Come, come. Woo. Say this, say this. Lost without you. Blind and in darkness. Having God, having no God without hope. Blind and in darkness. Without God and having no hope. But you are my shield, oh God. You are a shield about me. You are the glory. You are my glory. Do that again. You are my glory. You are my glory. Hallelujah. Bakara basada la bakila bananja la basese re mama ramanete. Sikire mama na la la basete eshe redese talana na makota. You are my glory, you are my glory. Come on, man. If you can find the key, I'll sing. You are my glory, you are my glory. 
You are the shield about me. You are my shield about me. You are my shield about me. Redeemer and Savior. Oh, Redeemer and Savior. 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 My God, my King. Ha! Woohoo! Oh, Redeemer and Savior. Yeah! Redeemer and Savior, washed in the blood. Oh, you are my King. I will praise the Lord for His goodness. Come on now. Come on now. I praise the Lord for His mighty. I will praise the Lord for His goodness. Yes, I will praise the Lord for His mighty works. Come on, everybody. I will praise the you to scream it out.
His mighty works. I, I will, will declare His mighty works. Yes, hallelujah. Oh, I, I will praise the Lord, Lord forever. forever. <laughs> and I, I will declare His mighty works. For His goodness and mercy endure forever and ever. Oh, His goodness and mercy endure forever and ever. Lord, Your goodness and mercy endure forever and ever. Endures forever and ever. So I will praise the Lord forever, and I will declare His mighty works. Oh. So full of peace that passes under, full of joy and full of love and full of everlasting the grace of God in me. <laughs> Poured out abundantly. <laughs> Shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. Pour forth in me now this love of God. This joy unspeakable, this peace that passes, understanding this life forevermore. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, I feel like I feel like I feel like singing and shouting all night long. I just need to spend some more time with these guys up here. Hallelujah. Ha 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 just go ahead and get happy and have your own party for a minute with the Lord a joy unspeakable and full of glory it's joy unspeakable and full of glory oh it's joy 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 See, there's a fourth chord, and there's a primary chord, and then there's a fifth chord. You gotta find out which one. You gotta follow me. Otherwise, you're carrying me back elsewhere, okay? And I can't do that. So it's better to sing a cappella. Hallelujah. <laughs> Blessed is, and my son's been up too long in UC Santa Cruz. Lord, thank you for deliverance. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I like, I like worship that's in spirit and in truth anyway. <laughs> you got to let the Holy Ghost carry you away. <laughs> With your heart, not your head. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, blessed is the name of the Lord forever. <laughs> blessed is the name of the Lord forever. Blessed is the name of the Lord forever. The Lord God most high. Oh, blessed is the name of the Lord forever. Blessed is the name of the Lord forever. Blessed is the name of the Lord forever. The Lord God most high. <laughs> oh, blessed is the name of the Lord forever. Blessed is the name of the Lord forever. Blessed is the name of the Lord forever. The Lord God 
Most high. Well, blessed is the name of the Lord forever. Blessed is the name of the Lord forever. Blessed is the name of the Lord forever. The Lord God most high. Oh, blessed is the name of the Lord forever. Blessed is the name of the Lord forever. Blessed is the name of the Lord forever. The Lord God most high. Blessed, blessed is the name of the Lord forever. Blessed is the name of the Lord forever. Blessed is the name of the Lord forever. The Lord God most high. Blessed is the name of the Lord forever. Blessed is the name of the Lord forever. Blessed is the name of the Lord forever. The Lord God most high. Blessed is the name of the Lord forever. Blessed is the name of the Lord forever. Blessed is the name of the Lord forever. The Lord God most high. I love his presence. Listen here. You know, I'm not going to just do this here. If I could just show you how to do this long enough, you could step right over into a place of just getting so excited in God, you begin to prophesy. Hallelujah. You'll begin to have, begin to have things that are just heavenly. It's not hard. Not, to, not, today, today I, I put Naomi on the skateboard and the carver, you know, because it's easy to move around. And so I, I had her up on her hands and her knees, and, I, of course, I had her shirt and I mean, I had her moving down the sidewalk and down the pavement. She was having a good time because when I took her off and I picked up the skateboard and started walking away, she totally collapsed. She totally collapsed. She put her head into her, into her arm, and she started welling like she was broken in heart. Because why? She was having fun, and I took the fun away. Listen, I'm going to just tell you right now, you better watch out for what's ever taken the fun away. And there is no fun. Listen, I'm going to tell you, listen to me right now. There is no fun outside of the realms of the kingdom of God. Satan lies to everybody and tries to tell them that all these other things are fun. They death and everybody, all you don't you have to experiment too long to discover just how much death it is. Blessed is the name of the Lord forever. Blessed is the name of the Lord forever. Blessed is the name of the Lord forever. The Lord most high. Oh, God, my King, my Savior, precious is your name. Oh, God, my King, my Savior, holy is your name. Oh, Redeemer, arisen and Lord, Redeemer, arisen and Lord, oh, Redeemer. He's high and I'm lifted up forever. He's my Savior and my King. Hallelujah. Lord, forever you are my Savior and my King. You know, really what we're doing is we're just trying to help you see how easy it is to just encourage yourself in the Lord. It is just what we do to encourage ourselves in the Lord. We walk around doing this. Huh? Oh, gee. Now, I know some of you have a terrible voice, but you can dance and you can rap. You don't have, <laughs> you can just do rap. Uh, anybody can talk and rap and dance around. And besides that, you know, when no one's hearing you and only the Lord, he says it sounds good. He says make a joyful noise. It didn't have to be a melody. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm telling you right now. If you're not anointed to sing, in other words, if the gifting that God has given, if you haven't got, been given a gifting of God to sing, if you haven't given, been given pipes, or rather maybe you've been given pipes, but you don't know how to use them, let me put it that way. It's really not a very good comfort or a blessing or an exhortation for you, for us, for you to come and dr grab the microphone. Even as though you're zealous and you just want to bless the Lord. I mean, you know, all the rest of us have to stand around and listen to that. You know what? But on your own, ha, 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 ha. I'm sure, certain the Lord delights in it. Hallelujah. Well, praise the name of Jesus. You can be seated for a little while, maybe. 
Man, I'm telling you right now, I was going to spend some more time with Joshua and these guys up here and then get them all back into the flow. They've been all here, there, and yon. And, but we get people back in the flow. And we can just go ahead and just cut loose. and Hallelujah. We want you to cut loose here tonight. Hallelujah. Paranambatea. Paramese de divita. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. Listen, you've got to understand how to do this. Otherwise, there's going to be this great void in your life. And if there's a great, if there's a void in your life, I'm going to tell you right now, the darkness abhors a void. The darkness abhors the vacuum. When the, when the enemy comes, when devils come and they see the place all clean and swept and decorated but empty, they fill the place, men. They fill the place. And tonight I just want to talk to you about staying in a, in a realm of, just, of being filled up, of encourager, encouraging yourself in the Lord. There are primarily two sources or, or uh, dispositions or attitude of the heart. And, and if you would look at the root cause of everything, there are, two, there are two primary attitudes and conditions of the heart from which everything springs, either love or fear. And the whole world lies in wickedness. The whole world lies in judgment. The whole world lies in fear. And, and that's why Paul said in Romans 8, 15, that the Lord hasn't given us the spirit of bondage anymore to fear. When you under, when you under bondage, when you under the influence of the spiritual realm of darkness, all there is there is fear. And out of that fear, all these various different things happen, all these actions and all these activities, things that you wouldn't even necessarily recognize as fear, but nonetheless, they fear. they just nothing but fear. And creates all kinds of decisions, it creates all kinds of actions, it creates all kinds of problems and issues. But the Lord has sent forth the Son, the Spirit of His Son into our hearts so that we can cry out, oh, God is my dad. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and in God is my dad, then we have this love that cast out all fear. Hallelujah. Oh, what love the, oh, what, what manner of love. Oh, what dimension of love. Oh, what amazing love. Oh, what undescribable love. Oh, what incomprehensible love. Oh, what different kind of love. The love that goes beyond anything that is human. Because if you mess up and you do all kinds of bad things, I know a human person is going to love you. Maybe your mama. And she might even get tired of you after a while. You know, you understand me? Uh, huh? Your dad would be ashamed. Your mama would say, well, you know, he's a good kid. but Or she's a good kid, but people just don't understand. No, no, no. Father's love goes beyond all of that. Father's love. Father's love that was manifested in Jesus Christ reached into a place for you and me and got us out of our darkness. And then what happens is darkness comes and the lies of Satan comes and tries to run interference with that and tries to shove us back into a corner of isolation from him like we're not good enough. I mean, were you good enough for Jesus to die for you 2,000 years ago? No, you weren't. You know, God, when you were wicked, God commended his love towards you. Now, when God, God spared not his own son, but freely offered him up for us all, how much more shall he also by him freely give us all things? He's an amazing God. There's nothing like him. There's no one like him. There, there's, it's just indescribable. What manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. What an amazing grace. And there's, there's said, there's got us, listen to me now. You listen to me. Because I know when people are distracted. I don't have to have a discerning of, I don't have to have discerning of spirits to see a distracted, displaced look on your face. I'm going to tell you right now, if my kids had a distracted, displaced look on their face, we would go home and we would sit down and we would talk about where we, whether or not we needed to move Montana or not. We never had to do that. But I always had, listen, when I was, when I was young, and I'm still young now, but I'm just a little older than then. But when I was younger, <laughs> when I was younger than 56, and I, I heard this guy, James Dobson, and he's talking on, on this family radio program and, he described how he had a great job and he was making lots of money and everything was going good for him. 
And then he discovered that his son was disconnected from the reality that is in God and was getting involved in all the stuff that was around him. So he basically packed up and he moved to someplace like Montana. Someplace just packed up. I'm going to tell you right now, I said, Lord, I will do that. I'm going to keep my kids first. I'm going to keep in my nose in their business. Hallelujah. I'm going to keep my life right integrated with them. Because, I mean, listen, what, what's more important, what should be more important to you than your family? What should be more important to you than, first and foremost, those that are around you? I mean, look, God has given us such love. He's poured his love into us by the Holy Ghost. But you know what? Two hands for beginners. Love them who are dependent upon you. <laughs> you know, love them who love you, okay? And, and then go ahead and start working your way, easing yourself on in to a love of God where you can love them who hate you and, and then lay down your life for people who don't even know you. I mean, come on, people. Listen, I just want, I want tonight, I, I want to encourage you first and foremost to receive the love of God, to understand that it never fades away, understand that Jesus is your only hope. There is no hope outside of him. Jesus is your only confidence. Out of that hope comes a great confidence and a boldness. Hallelujah. It, the, 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 the wonderful works of God displayed in Christ Jesus, who through him he redeemed us, washed us in his blood, and made a way to where we could continually be cleansed. Listen, people, the, 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 the sin and the failure and the shortcomings, they're problematic, but they're not the big deal. The big deal is where you don't want to walk with God. You don't want to be taught his ways. God is righteous in all his ways and holy in all of his works. He's got nothing but life. He's got no death in it. He's got life with no death in it. He's got, he's got love with no hate in it. Okay, he's got joy with no sadness in it. He's got peace with no war in it. Listen to me. No condemnation in it. In other words, peace with no condemnation in it. And he wants to teach us that way. And it, but if people choose to live over in hate and darkness and sadness and sorrow and misery, everybody gets the option. I want to wake you up to reality that there are basic dispositions and attitudes of life that really ultimately, uh, they describe who we are spiritually. They describe the spiritual state. They describe the opportunities that God has given us that we are either accepting or rejecting. If you think you're going to find some kind of meaning and value and joy and peace in outside of that which God has given to us in his life, who is manifested, and we call him Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus is God's life manifested. God, Jesus Christ is eternal life or God's life, unending, unmeasurable, unstoppable, forever life. And that life was manifested, became flesh. The word of God, the revelation, the declaration, the definition became flesh for one purpose, so that he could bear our sins and incur all the wrath that sin deserves. So that you and I could find a place in God that though there may be, may be many offenses, where's your heart? Where's your heart? You've got to be careful if you're having fun with something else other than the presence of the Lord. If you're having fun with something other, in other words, than the life of God. Because your heart's not right then. And you, the bottom line of it is, is you know that that fun ultimately has only a wage, has only one kind of wage for you, and that wage is death. Tonight I want to talk to you about how to live in the life and walk in the life and enjoy the life. This is not some kind of legalistic bondage. It's liberation. He's not giving us the fear, the spirit of fear anymore as a result of bondage. But he's given to us this liberation because we have the spirit of the son. We're walking over around in this realm of freedom of relationship with him. People, I want to see you move in faith. I want to see the faith increase in your life. I want to see the fear shut down. I want to see the love of God begin to be made manifested. I want, I want to see the confidence. I want to see the confidence of God manifested in your life, a confidence that results in the things that only can be displayed by the Holy Spirit in a confident heart. And, you know, the Lord lays, for, lays out these things for us. In 1 John 2, the Lord tells us and declares to us, that if we obey his word, if we keep his commandments and obey his word, we have confidence. He tells us also, then again, in chapter 4, verse 12, he says, if we love one another, then we have confidence. Um, he, he gives to us this wonderful privilege and access to know that we can have confidence even in the day of, 
of judgment because our lives are wrapped up in him as he is, so are we. Our life is wrapped up in him. He's in me and I'm in him. See, you, God wants you, ha, huh. it doesn't take long. Listen, I don't care how much you do and say it's tongues. If it doesn't bring you over into a place, I listen, if it doesn't bring you over into a place of connectivity with God, I want you to stop it because it's not real. It's not real. The baptism of tongues is an activity of the Holy Spirit that brings us over in a manifest life of God. And if it's, if it's anything other, if it does anything other than that, I don't want you to shut it down. I don't want you to do it. I don't want you to allow it. I want you to pray after your understanding. Cry out to God for mercy. Tell him that you want, him, want to know him until something happens to you that's real. You listen to me now. Okay, because there's too much going on around in the charismatic zoo, in the charis <laughs> what was it? the charismatic zoo. Somebody said that they're well. I'm not going to get into that. I don't want to be on the negative things here and just kind of, you know. I just want to help you people. I just we want to help everybody. We want to help the people that are watching us by web tonight. God loves you. The blood of Jesus abounds under many offenses. God made a way. Adam didn't do it. He couldn't even keep the smallest little act of obedience. It's crazy, man. He failed. I mean, this is terrible. You know, you, you, you look at somebody, they're given the ability and they're given the power to, to do what's right and to stand for what's right, and then some little wrong comes along and they cave into it, and you go, my goodness. I was watching these, these I, I love watching, you know, the uh, Planet Earth series, you know. I love watching that, and the Alaska series and this the animals you know and then, and there were these you know particular type of buffalo and they had they just you know they were talking about how you know how strong and how you know capable they were to you know uh, the, to stand off all of the predators stand against uh, the predators and these wolves came and sorted out one of the calves and they're over there tearing a the calf up and all these big huge you know buffalo we're standing over there looking, and I'm going, you bunch of cowards. I'm talking to them. I'm coaching them from the couch. You bunch of cowards. I, I, dis I despise your species. <laughs> you cowards. And then they got on the move, man. They all started moving towards those wolves, and then they surrounded them, and I repented and said, oh, okay, you guys got it together. You know, a bunch of cowards. Just going to stand there and watch the baby get torn apart by a bunch of wolves. You know, come on. People, it's a terrible thing to watch the capacity and the ability and the strength that God has given to us just go to waste. Just just capitulating. Just give it up and throw, you know, throw it up our arms in despair over the slightest little thing. I mean, if you fall down, get up real quick. I mean, if you if you mess up, call out. You know. <laughs> You know, God, the Lord is going to immediately answer you. He's going to say, why did you, why did you get caught up in fear? And you have little faith. Whether it's Peter sinking into the water because the storm becomes, the storms of life become bigger to him than who Jesus is. See, he had already been anointed of the Holy Ghost by the Lord Jesus Christ to go out and represent the Lord, to raise the dead, to cast out devils, to... Open the eyes of the blind. <laughs> he knew all the Lord had to do was give him power. That's what he's saying. Give me power. Give me the ability. Speak the own word. Bid me come to you. Because he knew what the authority of Jesus would result in in his life. All Jesus got to do is commission you to do it. All you got to do is hear him say you can do it. And whatever he says you can do, you can do it. Be certain you can do it. And, and, and Peter had come to know that. So just bid me come. Let me have the power to walk with you on the water. The Lord says, come do it. Because he's sharing with us. And everything that he has, he wants to find out. He wants us to find our life integrated with him. He abandoned himself of all the riches and of all of his glories to become totally integrated with us and become not just our equal, not to become, as it were, our co-labor and partner, but to become our slave, our servant, to give himself for us. Oh, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God and people are all sleepy-eyed, dreamy-eyed, looking for some other, th other thrill out there. When all this time Father has given to us the privilege to come and bind in Him, it ain't about failure or success. It's about learning how to walk in the Spirit and find your life in Him. 
That's what it's about. It's about learning how to live in Him. It's not about discipline. It's not about all these other things. It's about learning to live in Him. It's about learning to step out of all the things, the cares of this life, all the pressures, all the fears, all the social issues, all the things you think, all the strife, all the busyness, all the earthly things, all the earthly interest. You know, the Lord's always saying, oh, you have little faith. I mean, that's worse than saying, oh, you have little confidence. He says, if I clothe the field, the the, the, the ground with the flower and the grass, how much more will I going to take care of you? Oh, you have a little faith. He's always, the Lord's bringing that back. Oh, you have a little faith. Why did you fear? Why, why can't you just believe I'm going to take good care of you? Listen, there's nothing like knowing divine provision. There's nothing like knowing divine protection. Ooh, hallelujah. Man, I know that I'm kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed, that I know that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life, that my name is, re I have a place reserved in heaven in him, that I, that I am his and he is mine. I mean, come on. If you don't have that, you are, you are, the, you are most miserable of all people because you know nothing about where you're going. And I'm certain, I'm going to tell you this for certain, you are going someplace. I heard an atheist on the CNN last night say, oh, the world would be a wonderful place without God. A miserable demon possessed, full of, of, of darkness, full of sorrow, baggy-eyed liar. You can tell how much sleep he's not getting. Look at his eyes. Big old giant bag, your suitcases right underneath his eyes. Full of sorrow, trying to put on some act. Like all of us are a bunch of, you know, brainless, gullible idiots. Oh, how wonderful. Well, you, it ain't looking very wonderful you, for you, mister. You don't have God and you don't look wonderful, buddy. Hello. Are you what we're going to get if we believe what you believe? Everybody's sitting there on the, on the CNN set smiling, just taking it all in. I, man, I'm telling you right now, I'm like, I want to crawl on that television and ask a couple of questions here. Well, if it's such a wonderful place, why do you look so messed up? The Lord has opened up the door <laughs> so we can step out of lies and darkness so we can step out of all the deception and all the things that, this, that, that Satan, the powers of darkness, and that evil men try to impose upon us. Listen, you, I'm going to tell you right now, you live in an evil world. I don't care who tells you we saw sit around, hold hands, sing kumbaya, and it's going to get better. It ain't going to get better. There is no evidence in all of history that things are going to get better. People act like somehow there's going to be, oh, it's all going to be better because now we're educated. No, we're worse off. Okay, oh, now we're all educated. We're all going to get along. Yeah. <laughs> Look in history, man. This world is full of evil. It's full of wickedness. It's full of darkness. Men are, men are wicked by nature. Thus, look at our history. And why then should anyone conclude our future is going to be any different? I don't hear anybody who's supposed to be some brilliant politician or statesman on the platform of trying to bring some answers to humanity's talking anything about such realities. You hear them spinning all the things that are just going to suit their own interests. My God, raise somebody up who can make some sense, who can talk some truth, who can deal with some issues. Huh? Come on now. <laughs> just take the law away. Just take the law away. Just tell, just dismiss Southern California Police Department altogether and watch what's going to happen. Watch what's going to happen. It won't take hours either. Watch what's going to happen. You can watch and see it over and again, the history of men, the anarchy of men. Come on, people. You and I are supposed to be shining as the light of the world, and there's no way we can until we'll start getting integrated with the life of God because nobody's really interested in hearing another spiel as you try to talk to people about Jesus like a used car you want to sell. Try to tell them how good it's going to be, how many miles you can get out of it, how it's going to run well for you, and you've just got to try it out. I know it doesn't look good, but my goodness, this thing runs like a top. I know it looks hard and beat up, you know, trashed, but come on. 
Just give it a try. Give me a break. I'm... <laughs> the violent take it by force. Kingdom of heaven suffer violence. I'm interested in seeing this stuff turned around. I'm interested to see this messed up mess fixed up. <laughs> and the only way that's going to happen is when we open up the door and let the king of glory come in. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. When we begin to allow our lives <laughs> to be integrated with his wonderful solutions, with his wonderful gift, he's given to us everything that pertains to life and godliness. We're not left without ability. He's created us with a new heart and a new spirit and put his spirit on the inside of us and baptize us in the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit has come fill us up and we're all saying we're in the heavens and come down. That's not faith. That's unbelief. That's doubt. Doubt's getting nowhere with God. Doubt is a product of fear. It's a product of fear. Not willing to believe the report of God's love and who he is. His goodness and his mercy and his tenderness. Do you people know how many times you mess up? It's whether or not you want to learn the right way. Huh? I mean, look, you know, yeah, listen, I think it's so beautiful. I'm just, just, I love meditating upon the story. I, every time that I've seen anybody do a painting of the picture of Peter walking on the water and starting to sink, I don't care. I'll stand there. I don't It's like a, you know, a, a chalk drawing. I'll stand there and look at it because it's just such an important thing to me. It's such a beautiful, you know, description of my relationship with the Lord. As soon as I begin to sink, I holler out, and he immediately reaches out his hand and grabs me. He could have said, he could have said, you're going to be fine, stand up. He could, have, he could have done it without touching him. You know, he could have just transported him right back in a boat. Translated him back in the boat. He's, he's affectionate. He's touchy. He likes to kiss us. Uh, Simon, I came into your house and he gave me no kisses. This woman, when she says she, 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 she'd be a sinner, since she's come in here, she's not stopped kissing my feet. She wanted to be free from the curse of sin and depression and darkness. And, and the abuse that she had lived under all of her life. People come and rock a by. Satan comes and rock a, rock a, rock a by the people of God to sleep so quickly. People, it's time you're not ignorant against Satan's devices. Huh? It's time you learn how to dwell in him. It's time you last support a die. It's time you get yourself a Holy Ghost, you know, regulator on in the inside of you. So that as soon as there's anything starts happening where you start drifting, the power of God kicks in and it just, uh huh, and you just get charged right back up again in the anointing. That's why the Lord calls us. He says, redeem the times. The day is evil. I mean, if the day was evil 2,000 years ago, how much more evil is it today? Within the framework of men, I'm going to tell you it's going to get worse and worse because ultimately we will see, we understand the end point. Therefore, we can interpolate. Uh, at this juncture and understand pretty much where we're at. We know the end point is men will become so wicked they will knowingly come and fight against God because that's where all sin will end. All sin will end in total hatred and anger against God to where you do not want him to exist anymore. Satan does not want God to exist another day. That's to destroy God. That same thing, sin will take you there. You want to destroy everything that is good and beautiful and wonderful because hate will eat you up on the inside so bad Darkness which eats you up on the inside so bad. Huh? Father's come to give us life through his only begotten son. Where Adam failed, Jesus succeeded. And though that Adam's sin abounded unto many because of one offense, now much more the obedience and the righteousness of Christ Jesus abounds unto many offenses. For anyone who will be as, will, as willing to believe. People want to make Adam's sin and transgression, transgression of greater effect than Christ Jesus' obedience and righteousness. I'm telling you right now, Jesus' obedience and his righteousness and that which he did at Calvary's cross and that which happened when he raised up from the dead on the third day and ascended up on high has greater effect and more power than anything that Adam, you know, blew it in. He blew it. He blew it. Father wants to teach us, and he, if we're willing to learn, he'll teach us how to stand into a place and come into maturity where we will stand in just the same kind of obedience he stands in. And in the meantime, you know, be dedicated to learning. God is righteous in all of his ways and holy in all of his works, and say, Lord, I want to walk in all your ways and do all your works. And find yourself forever trusting in him with total abandonment, saying, Lord, you my only righteousness. You own my life. 
You are my goodness. You are my confidence. Ten billion years from now, I'll take the crown off my head as soon as he walks in and say, you alone are worthy. You alone redeemed us out of every kindred and tribe and nation. And nobody has a right to stand up on their feet in your presence, Lord. You purchased us with your own blood. Oh, mighty God. I mean, it's wonderful, this grace and this mercy and this love of God. And, and it's so sad when people just try to have that at the exclusion of what God demands, us learning his ways. People think that there's some kind of sanctification in the sepulcher. That there's some kind of sanctification after you die. You may be sanctified in Jesus Christ right now. If you don't choose him now, you're not going to choose him later. The scripture says, take in a wicked man and put him in the land of the upright and he will do wicked, sti wickedly still. Take a wicked person, give him a mercy pass. Let him come into the glory land of paradise and the realms of heaven and he will do wickedly still. He'll be looking around, sneaking around, or she'll be looking around, sneaking around, trying to find somebody to mess things up with. Man, I'm glad Father is who he is. Hallelujah. He's going to put it into that nonsense. I mean, God is in the love. He's in the covenant. He's in a relationship that never gets breached. He's in the family that's always hugging and kissing and loving each other in every pure and holy way. God made relationship to last forever so good. And the greatest disaster or devastation to man is broken covenant and broken relationship right, left, and center. Huh? There is no price worth paying to have such a destructive life. Christ Jesus paid the ultimate price for you and I to be able to step over whoo, into this love into this abundance of life. I mean, there's no way to describe it. He, he, said, he said he's come to give us life and to give, us, it, give it to us more abundantly. And, that, and, and so here's another way of saying, it, saying, I've come to give you life and to give it to you beyond all that I could ever or anyone else could describe. Hallelujah. Uh, your rivers flowing out of you. It'll be gushers coming out of joy and goodness. I mean, just think about your life. You know, people say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to live my life like I want to. You, you stupid. <laughs> that you can't see that you don't get to live your life like you want to because if reality of it is, if you got to live like your life like you wanted to, then you would live happy every day. You would live in goodness every day. You would live in, you would live in blessings every day. Everything would be going your way. Obviously, you're not getting to choose Nada. Or in translation, nothing. Are you listening? Does that make sense? Has anybody else got their eyes open? Is anybody else looking at what's going around down here? Kind of give me a break. God has given us the opportunity to live every day in his goodness. Woo! To live every day in his goodness, not our goodness, not in just goodness. Not in goodness as it would be defined in the best state of man, but in his goodness. <laughs> See, I'm about ready to dance and jump and run, so I got to do something, you know, let the energy out a little bit. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, what love. I mean, what, what life. The Lord, the Lord just lays it out. He says, you're dead. You, until you know Christ Jesus, you're dead. He said, I am the truth, the life, and the way. There is no way for you to come into life, no way for you to come to Father, no way for you to know who made you, created you, who purposed you to live in him and with him throughout the ages. This is the whole purpose of creation. There's no way in but me. Without me, you're dead while you live. It's about time God's people begin to receive the life of Christ. And live in it. <laughs> I know people have responded to the altar calls and they come, oh, Jesus, please. <laughs> but it's time to get up and walk this thing out. And when sorrow or sadness hits you, kick it out. Don't allow it to rule and reign over you for 24 hours. Huh? Don't allow your mouth and your and your and your and your mind to speak and work and, and, and to work out offensive things that are covenant breaking, that are defilement, that that are breaches against other people's lives, that insult other folks around you, that that brings their their who they are into question, slander, backbiting, and all that stuff. This is no, it's darkness, and it's time that the life of Jesus be seen. 
Huh? I mean, this is go Ramon Zara de Beti. This love. Huh? This love, this display of the divine nature, he's given us everything that pertains to life and godliness so we can live it out because he called us to glory and excellence of character and gave, because he gave to us his divine power, his divine, by his divine power, his divine nature. So having escaped now from the corruption that is in the world through lust and being clearly seen to be a separate and distinct people full of life with no death in it, Huh? Everybody can see this goodness of God. Come on. Come on. What's holding you back? What's so interesting that you would linger and not rush in? What's so interesting that you would hesitate and, and, and bite your fingernails down to the whatever so that you could... They call them cuticles? Because you're scared you're going to lose out on something if you give up to life. Yeah, you're going to lose out on death. You're going to lose out on some more sorrow. Just go ahead and deal with it. You're going to lose out on some more sadness and more depression. You're going to lose out on some more, you know, broken relationships and people hating you and you hating people and people talk about about you and you talk about about them and all the rest that goes along with it. And who knows, somebody might provoke you enough that you want to kill them or they'll kill you. Who knows where that would end. Now, come on, get out of it. You know, hug the thing for a little while, say your goodbyes, and come on. <laughs> come on! In Jesus' name. You can't live a day of life without him. You need him. And he's never going to be away. He's never going to be elusive from you. He's going to be right there to immediately stretch forth his hand and save you. Stretch forth his hand, grab hold of you. Hallelujah. <laughs> You know, I was thinking today about how that when after, after the, the dancing girl had gotten John the Baptist's head on a platter because her mom put the words in, his heart, in her mouth and, and his disciples came to get his body because they had his head. The scripture says, and they came and they got his body and they immediately went and told Jesus and Jesus departed from that place into a desert place by boat. And the crowds, knowing where he was going, ran to the place. And he got there, and he saw the crowds, and he was smooth with compassion. And, he, and the Scripture says he made every one of them whole. He saved every one of them. Because he knew. He's just reflecting. I know what's going on. He was reflecting, you know. That's, they're going to come to get me. They're not going to come and they're going to crucify me. And he looks out on those crowds. And he could see in all the people, because he could look into the future with the word of knowledge and understand, he knew all those people were going to be saying, away with him, crucify him. It's not right that he should live. But he was rather overwhelmed by compassion. Oh, my God. I mean, you can't look at Father in the Bible and the word of God and not fall in love with him. You can't spend a 24-hour day with the goodness of God and the love of God and not be overwhelmed with his kindness and his mercy and his tenderness. Come on, people. It's time to get to know who he is and begin to come and live and dwell in God. He that, and, and, and ultimately what God will do is cause you to be captivated by his love. And he that dwells in love dwells in God. Herein is our love made perfect. Our love is made perfect by obeying his word. Our love is made perfect by loving one another. But our love is made perfect by dwelling in him. He that, he that fears is, is not being made perfect in love. What, so what is that? Now we got to go, you know, drop our head and go, go. Feel bad about ourselves? No. Huh? We just look to him who loves us so. And we say, I want to be that. I want to be what you want me to be. And I know I can't do nothing for myself. I can't do anything for myself. I couldn't resave myself. I couldn't redeem myself. I couldn't heal myself. I couldn't make myself whole. I couldn't give myself a new heart. I couldn't give myself a new spirit. I couldn't get you interested in being able to come and live on the inside of me with all this wickedness. You did it all for me. And I know you'll do it all for me because have you begun in the Holy Ghost? Have you begun in the love of God and the mercy of God and the creative miracle of God now to be made perfect out of your own human interest and all your human reasoning and ability and discipline? Away with it. Away with it. Come on, man. Get out of death. God's just inviting everybody to come out of death. 
People got to sit around and debate whether or not we came from Echinodermis purpuralis. Or whether we came from this or we came from that. How do we know there's a God? Give me a break. Look around. Make a choice. You want to live in sorrow and sadness and depression? You want to live in love and goodness and grace? And it's going to take a miracle for you to live in love and goodness and grace. And a miracle is ready to be worked for you just like it's worked for anybody else who stepped over into this realm. And you can see God's people everywhere have stepped over into this realm. If even only momentarily, which is sad. If even once a month. They get, they get lost over in glory land. Their sorrowful thing is that the light needs to be shining 24 hours a day in their life. God has given us the capacity. He's given us everything that pertains to life and life more abundantly. And out of our innermost being flows inexpressible, in, um, inexhaustible, unlimited dimensions of life. Almost like the only way to describe it is like rivers busting loose on the inside of you. Just, it, it just never runs out. Rivers never run out. You can stand there and watch the river from now to out the end of the age, and it's still just flowing on by you. you think, where's that draining down from? There's a place up near, a place we love to go that, that the Lord blessed us with many years ago. And about, I don't know, probably about five miles from it, there's a spring, and it's a gusher of a spring. It springs all over the place. I love going into land where there's springs, just springs everywhere. If you're interested in buying property, let me give you one criteria. Let there be busting springs, not something to just get your feet a little soggy. Let there be <laughs> busting up out of the ground. You know you got yourself some good real estate then. you 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 in it. <laughs> but about five miles from this place, there's a spring, and it's a gusher. But you don't have to go too far, and it becomes a river. And it becomes the south fork of the John Day River. It is amazing what a wellspring will do because wellsprings seem to converge on one another. God put us a wellspring on the inside. And then he did something even... <laughs> he did it almost about an Aapri. For me, it's like it's rivers because he's come on the inside with his river, his wellspring, his river. And the Holy Ghost came on the inside with his wellspring. Look, skateboard's not here. Skateboard's not here. Something more fun is. Holy Ghost came with his river. Did you have something that you needed to say? You're just broken up on the inside. Is it like fire shut up in your bones? Is it a burden of the Lord or what? Huh? Just, uh, go ahead, quickly. That's what I thought. <laughs> Holy Ghost came with his river. Woo! Can you think about that for just a minute? Papa God, Father came with his river. Jesus came with his river, and that's why we've got rivers going out of us. Because it's a treasure on, these in the, in the, on the inside of these earthen vessels that's not of us. It's of him. The excellency of the glory, it's of him. It's him. It's God in me and you. It's Christ in us. Our confidence of glory. Huh? He doesn't move out and move back in, move out and move back in, and move out and move back in, and move out and move back in. Huh? He doesn't come home at night because things aren't right. He's here. Can you hear me? Can anybody hear me? I feel like I need to be turned up really loud or speak another language or something. I'm wondering, oh, God, open my mouth and cause me to make known your word as I ought so that people can hear you. This is good stuff. This is life. This is God life. This isn't human life, man's life. This is God life. Now you're going to behave. Otherwise, you're going to have to come over here and Papa's going to stand real close to Papa as he screams. <laughs> She's enjoying it. Hallelujah. Kila manja desarea. Hallelujah. Best thing to do is get yourself a family, keep them in church, and hold them functioning, flowing in the anointing because they'll never be lost. Hallelujah. Don't hand them off to the world and to the wicked. I'm telling you right now, everywhere we go, it's reality in the United States of America. They've set up shop. The humanists have set up shop. The atheists have set up shop. Those who are apostate have set up shop in the education centers by design. It's a satanic strategy in a Luciferian cult to make the deception complete. Get your kids in church. 
Hallelujah. Post a kind of to keep in church. I'm just so glad that everybody's getting to move back down here. <laughs> See, I like this because when she first got here, she wouldn't come to me. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to go to the old guy. Get me away from the old guy. I'm like, come on. Come on. Come give Papa a kiss. Come give Papa a kiss. What keeps this relationship right? There's only one power that can keep the relationship right. Father never meant anyone to die or, any, or the good thing to ever come to an end. That's why everybody lives forever. Father didn't create us to end Huh? The loss of a loved one is one of the greatest disasters when they're close to you. The thought of me losing my wife, even for a day, is something that is unimaginable to me. God never meant any relationship, any life to end. Huh? And it's not going to. God created us eternal. He created us in, the image in, his, in his image and his likeness, in his outward appearance and in his inward form. And by virtue of having been so created, we are eternal. And Father desires for us to learn his way so we can live with him, the ancient of days, forever. To be in a place where there is just nothing but his goodness all day long. And it's not a fairy tale. I'm getting to live in it right now. I'll get to live in heaven right now. I'm not talking about something that's unseen, some fictional ideology of, of the future. I'm afraid she's going to pull the mic off. She's on, work. she's on it. She's good, too. Boy, she analyzed that thing for a few minutes, and then she's got it. It disappears quick. Say <laughs> the See, I mean, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm just talking to you by the word of the, of the Lord, by the Spirit of God. And I want you to understand, I know what happens. He sends his word and heals. I don't need to see a lot of outward action. I mean, it's fine. I, sometimes there is a lot of outward display of things. I mean, my goodness, if you stick your finger in this light socket, you're going to get yourself an outward display. And, you know, but I'm going to tell you right now, I, I look for deep things happening on the inside of people by the power of the living God that cause them to walk out of the building saying, no way, man, I'm not living in death and darkness no more. I'm not fellowshipping with devils. I'm going to make, it, it's going to become real to me. I'm not going to live in a fictitious world trying to play make-believe and acting like these things don't exist. I'm going to go ahead and, Look at it for what it really is. I'm going to start dealing with reality. People say, people say Christians just trying to escape reality. Christians, God's people, I, I try to get away from terminologies. Christians, I mean, I don't even know what that means anymore. God's people who are born of the Spirit and washed in the blood, my goodness, they're the people who have to face themselves and face reality more than anybody else. they got to look square in the face of responsibility and rec recognize what God has done for us and look at the privilege that we have now to learn and grow up and mature and become responsible for all humanity. Come on, people. Man, i got so much power of God pulsing through me right now. It's a wonder I don't... You know, just cause this microphone to turn into powder, just gripping it so hard. Yeah, it's just, I just feel this power of God on me to come invade your life. If you would just let the Word of God begin to rule your heart and your mind, imaginations won't torment you no more. People live their, their emotions, their demeanor is many times a display of the imaginations that they allow to run wild in their mind. You never get the discerning of spirit. All you can have is a familiar spirit as long as imaginations run you, run, ruin your mind. Huh? I was telling a dear friend of mine today, I said, you don't try to categorize, don't put people in the same category. Don't categorize things the same. I want you to live by the word of God and see it concerning how God said it's going to be. And it just, it's not like you're stepping out of reality. You're stepping into reality. Faith is, a, is, 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 a, is by the, the, the means by which everything exists. <laughs> we understand that by faith, God framed the ages and the worlds by his word. Hallelujah. That, that word that comes forth by his faith. Well, again, I really want to minister on faith tonight. I'm just, 
You know, I'm going in a couple of different directions because I just feel and sense, you know, the urgency of, of God's people's need to just settle down in the lot because you're never going to really begin to move in this supernatural faith, this working of faith. Jesus' name. Me and, the, me and the comforter came at the same time. In that case, it was the bottle. You're never going to begin to move in the supernatural faith until you move in something that goes be, that, that, that instills something far more than confidence. It's this love of Father. It's this love of God. A love of God that never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you unto the end of the world. I'm going to send the Holy Ghost and He will be with you forever. He will, both be, he will be both with you and in you. And when he says he will be both with you and in you, then he's saying Jesus is going to be both with you and in you. He's saying the Father is going to be both with you and in you. Oh, the Holy Ghost is with us and in us. I don't know where the Father is. You, got, you have Holy Spirit. You have, you have Father and you have Son too. You have Jesus. Can you imagine that we just get off in our little problems, sit in a little corner, Ruthie, I mean, Leah, I mean, Ruthie. <laughs> Anna had to go stand in the corner, time out, the other day. And we said, Anna, you can come on out of the corner. She said, no, I'll stay another minute. I'm like, <laughs> she's enjoying that. Stop that. That, ain't, that is not discipline anymore. We go stand in the corner. No, I'm going to just stand in the corner for a little longer. We Come on, people. Nothing's going to change your life. Nothing's going to change your circumstances. Nothing is going to change your condition. Nothing's going to, there's going to be no miracles. There's never going to be no supernatural deliverance without faith. You want to walk around in doubt and fear and uncertainty and sorrow and just talk about it and prophesy the problem and speak about it some more and tell us about all that they want and all they think that God should have done for them. And nothing's going to change. You're going to have to get in the line. And you get in the life, and you're going to just start enjoying the love. And you're going to find God a merciful God. Loving you, 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 no matter how problematic you are. Huh? I was playing tennis the other day. I was, yesterday, I was so tired, I almost tripped over my own foot. I'm like, I'm not, I'm just like tripped over my own calf. I mean, it bore me up. I did not fall down. But anyway, you know, it's just like, goodness gracious. I mean, come on, let's get coordinated here. Let's start acting sensible here. Let's get out of all the issues and all the problems and all the make-believe and all the things. You're creating problems for yourself. You're agreeing with a liar who just sits back and laughs at you and mocks you because he just gives you a little suggestion and you run with it. Huh? He gives you, he gives you a little snowball and you turn it into the full one, you know. <laughs> what do they call it? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It was a snowball handed to you by the enemy and it just had an avalanche. You're never going to move anywhere. You have to start prophesying the word. You're going to start thanking God and believing him. And hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praising him. Giving thanks. Learning how to worship him if you can't sing rap. I still got the look. <laughs> Even though I didn't have to exercise, exercise it for the past, you know, 15, 16 years, it's still there. First John 2, verse 28. So somebody said, ah, oh, you know, being a grandparent is wonderful because they just bring the kids over and since they start acting up, you give them back to them and they got to get to leave. I'm not, I'm, in a, I'm an active participant grandparent that parades the belt around every once in a while and shows what all it can do just to educate just to educate because I believe the most one of the most important things that people have got to learn is how to respect authority you're going to have to learn how to respect the authority of God you have to learn how to respect the authority of God's word you have to learn how to respect the, respect the authority of the Holy Spirit. 
Because when you begin to respect his authority and you begin to be in awe of his word, you're going to find yourself believing what he said and moving in it and having the consequences and result. Instead of spending your whole life sitting on the sideline, I've watched the thing. I've been in the church all my life. I've watched people, and it's almost like they go to a, they go to a point where it's like they determine I'm going to be on the sideline for the rest of my life. They don't consciously know that, but so over and over and over again, they refuse to participate. They refuse to hear the word of God. They refuse simple obedience. And it just comes to a point that it's just like they're making this unconscious decision. I'm just going to spend the rest of my life on the sideline. Good thing God's full of love and mercy. You never have to, you didn't have to settle out for sideline. You could have been right at the center. I mean, I'm telling you right now, we are dedicated to be at the center of his will and plan. It's a song you need to sing. You need to start singing some of those older songs, you know, in the center of his will and plan. It's like, huh? Oh, we're going to we're gonna spend some time in music. Are you looking at this verse of Scripture? You know, First John is, a, is if you want to memorize a chapter, a book of the Bible, let me recommend First John doing it, memorizing First John. It's not that hard to do. The Holy Spirit will help you do it. And all of a sudden, some things are going to come together in the Scripture and in your life that will completely give you another, a whole other level of insight, a whole other level of connectivity to the will of the Father. I like to tell people, you should spend, you know, find some time in your life to spend a couple of months just in the doctrine of John, just reading what John wrote, just seeing God interacting with Christ Jesus through the eyes of John, the things he wrote, the Gospel of John, first and second and third epistle of John and the book of Revelation. It changes you. Then after that, go a couple, two, three, four months to spend it with Peter, which would be Mark and first and second Peter. Because it'll change you because now you're interacting with, you're interacting in the Scripture through what they saw. The way, they, the way they understood what Jesus ministered, the way the Holy Ghost expressed the will of the Father through them. I don't care who it, is that you, who it is that you hook up with, if you would, like that in the Word. You're going to see that they're saying the same thing. They're declaring the same God, and they're calling us to the same holiness. They're calling us really to the same life. They're not calling us to a bunch of works and discipline. They're calling us to come and live in this beautiful realm that Christ Jesus opened up the door for us to have. And it's regardless of who you are and it's regardless of your circumstances. And there's no excuses given for why you don't have to live there. Well, the Lord understands I'm going through such a terrible thing bad time that I can be sorrowful and sad, disappointed and mad and say all these negative things and curse myself day in and day out. No, he does not understand that. He doesn't understand that. It's just the opposite. It's just, it's, it's the worst disobedience. It's just really the worst disobedience. You know, the Lord didn't swear in his wrath that they're not coming into my rest, though it was finished from the foundation of the world, because of their because of, of their gross wickedness. He said it because of their murmuring and complaining. And you'd think that everybody would just shut up or go buy duct tape or gorilla tape or whatever and shut the thing down. Saying, Wow, you know, this is the first and foremost thing that we need to deal with. But they don't. They just keep on. Keep on. I pray today, I pray tonight that you'll make a a commitment to the Lord, to the Holy Spirit, to allow Him to have rule and reign over your heart and your mind. That the peace of God can keep your heart and mind. <laughs> that your tongue will be set on fire of heaven instead of set on fire of hell. That the blessings of God will begin to pursue out of your mouth and not the cursings because you can't get sweet and bitter water out of the same fountain. And it's time for you to find out what fountain you are made of, what spring you come from. Ain't nobody enjoying those salt water spring. I don't even think there is one. I think you actually have to dig down into the earth to find one of them. Hmm. What comes forth? Hallelujah. By the, just what comes forth, it, it springs up out of the earth. Hallelujah. That it, 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 it God created for us to be able to enjoy. Sweet. Come on. Don't be a sweet and bitter fountain. Don't have cursings and blessings. Well, I, I try to treat everybody good. 
Father wants, Father wants more than that. He wants you to love one another like he loved you. That's not trying to treat everybody good. Most people I've heard is trying to treat everybody good does, does a lousy job of it. Yeah, you don't know what, say, what I mean? Does everybody know what I mean? I'm just trying to treat everybody good. You're doing a lousy job, buddy. And, and, and anybody who thinks they can do these things on their own, they're out to, they're out, they're worse than out to lunch. They're out to life. I'd rather say they're out to death, rather. They're out of life and out to death. They've gone out to death. They'll be back sometime. We're not sure. When? Jesus, help us. And you can do nothing of yourself. You, we, we, get to be, get to begin, whew, we begin to interact with the Holy Ghost in relationship with him. And no matter where we're at, what situation we are in, we turn to him and say, oh God, fill me up with your love. Fill me up with your joy. Fill me up with your peace. Whatever it is that you need. Oh, God, strengthen me right now to just, if people, you know, how to live the most wonderful life. You know, I want to live the most wonderful life, the most heavenly life. How many of you like to understand how to live the most heavenly life in the Holy Ghost? Bless everybody, forgive everybody, and love everybody. How hard is that? Tremendously. <laughs> as long as you're isolated out, you know, somewhere where nobody can touch you, it's all easy and fine. But you're going to get lonely for people quickly. You're going to start talking yourself inside of about 72 hours. And you're going to go looking for somebody to hate. <laughs> Is this crazy or what? Is it crazy? You're going to go look for somebody to eventually have a problem with real quickly. It's nuts. Jesus, help us. Lord Jesus, we cry out to you right now. We want to get this thing right. We're, try we're, tired, we're tired of being weird we're tired of it lord we're tired we're fed up with ourselves i'm fed up to here with me i'm fed up come on now just and when you when you begin to do when that becomes a reality then you're able to begin to really deal with denying yourself and beginning to <laughs> No matter what the cost, live according to his will. Take up your cross and follow him, which means to just with total abandonment live to the will of the Father. Whew. And begin to find yourself yielding in every place to the Holy Ghost, having a relationship with him, finding yourself to willing in life. First of scripture here, first John chapter two. Verse twenty eight. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Hallelujah. It's hard to break into verse twenty eight, but I'm gonna do it. I might back up to 27 again. Huh? We have received a supernatural divine ability and anointing so that we don't have to have anybody teach us this. Everybody's supposed to know this. Directly taught by God, this one thing. To abide in Christ Jesus, verse 28. And now, little children, abide in him. Stay in the life. Jesus said, I am the life. I am the way, the truth, the life. I'm the life. He that hath the Son has life. He does not. He that has Jesus has life. He doesn't have Jesus doesn't have life. Do you have Jesus? Stay in it. Does he leave you from time to time? Is he like phasing in and out? Why don't you start prophesying over yourself? Nobody's going to change until you change your mind. Should I tell you the story about the person that believes they got to wash the dishes before they put them in the dishwasher? <laughs> Because they don't believe that they're sanitized until they first wash them, they're going to have to be. They're going to have to have a mind set, change. They're going to have to. They're going to have to. They're going to have to have a change of mind. They're going to have to believe that the wash machine does the correct job. I'm forgive me. The dishwasher. <laughs> Listen, I. This is a really real thing to me. Because it's my wife. I'm telling you. I caught her the other day. I said, there she is. I said, baby, you're backsliding. You're backsliding. You're over there washing the dishes. She came to me after we, when we settled this, and she said, it's amazing, because I had her do several different experiments, you know, dried food on the plates, just every kind of worst thing you could imagine, and the dishwasher did it. And she's like, it did it. Yes, it did. You don't have to wash those things before you. And then she's doing, she's washing this. I said, baby, what do we say about this mind change thing? 
you're not going to change until you first change in the way that you think. We want you to change in the way that you perceive God, the way that you think about God here tonight. What he's purposed for you, what he wants for you. He's given us an opportunity to come and abide and live in him and accept that he loves us. He that dwells in love, God loves me. And maybe you got to spend, you know, I don't know, a couple of years telling yourself all day he loves me before you're going to get it. But I'm going to tell you, if you begin to do that with a true and sincere heart, he's going to give you the revelation that he does love you. Now you're going to live and dwell in God. God is love. And you're going to find yourself absolutely translated out of all your confusion and problems over into a wonderful existence in him. And can we get past the condemnation here tonight? Is there any way we could possibly free you from condemnation? Is there any way we possibly can free you from being overwhelmed with a sense of failure in yourself? Can you recognize that all that stuff is you? God wants you to learn how to deny you so he can take over and he'll help you with that. In fact, he's giving you all the help you need. In fact, he's giving you everything that pertains to life and godliness because he called you to glory and excellence of character. Hallelujah. Through his exceeding great and precious promises, you might also have be a possessor and a <laughs> and a bearer of the divine nature, Whew. having now escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, so that now you can go ahead and add to yourself all these wonderful, virtuous, glorious, beautiful things that godliness, and the life of godliness, and the life of being in Him, and the abundant life supplies that you can't find anywhere else. Darkness, iniquity, sin will abhor a vacuum or an empty place. You need to get filled with the Spirit. You need to get filled with the life of God. And that is a choice. That isn't being, oh, God, oh, God. That is a choice that you say, no, no, no. The day is wicked. The day is evil. I'm going to redeem the day. I know how to set this. I know how to set Satan back. I know how to knock him off his feet. I know how to explode what he's doing. I'm going to redeem the time because the day is evil. I'm not going to be drunk with wine like everybody else is. I like the California sign. I need to take a picture of it and send it all over the nation. If you're driving buzz, you're driving drunk. I'm like, wow, they know more than God's people. We need to get a picture of that and send it as a news flash to preachers all over the United States, all over the world. Huh? If you're buzzed, you're drunk. So therefore, they that are buzzed shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's pretty simple, isn't it? Huh? They that are buzzed are functioning in the work of the flesh, interacting with demon spirits. Somebody said, how do you know? Because I've cast out, I've, uh, in the name of Jesus, I've cast out that devil and just watched people go from being drunk sober whether it was heroin or alcohol. No, it's a demon spirit. He would just want to try to make it some kind of physiological chemistry as though there's some kind of neuroscientist who understands neurological function and the way it interfaces with the endocrine system. It's nonsense. It's nonsense. We know more about the universe. We know more about our, the solar systems and galaxies than we know about the endocrine system and how it interfaces with the neurosystem. It's, 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 it's so simple, it's impossible. It's the way that we see the mechanisms work. Huh? Because it's more spiritual than it is chemical. Huh? We know these things. We know these things by the Spirit. We know these things by revelation. Hallelujah. Don't be drunk with wine wherein is debauchery. Wherein is all kinds of excess of immorality, where there is abandonment of all sense of the presence of God, where there is nothing but utter darkness and a depraved nature. It's another way to translate debauchery. I just like to break it down for everybody. Be filled. I'm not going to be empty. I'm going to be filled. How? Continually be filled. Abbasatea. How? What we were doing earlier, trying to model it for you here in the house of God, this place where the Spirit of God and the gifts of God are available and transferable. 
singing to yourself, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Let the word of, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, admonishing one another. And start with yourself. Go through the day admonishing yourself. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Could you just turn this up so when my mic goes away, I can one day believe that I could take this mic away with some kind of... Con oh, it's off? Is this the first time I've seen the sign? You guys have been waving the sign at me. It's off. And I haven't seen it? Wave it. Stand up, dance around with the thing. I'll get it. Because then I'm going to think, well, somebody's anointed. Then I'll see. Oh, it's lab is off. And it's important because people that are watching by the web and watching by YouTube, it makes all the difference for them to be able to have the lab on. And I'm interested in communicating the gospel. He said, oh, you guys are all just speaking in tongues. I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to speak in a whole lot more in tongues. We're going to give you enough revelation from heaven that you'll be set for life. We're going to make you, we're going to give you enough revelation in God that you'll have all the responsibility you should ever care to want to have. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. We're going to give you, we're going to deliver the word of God to you by the spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. So that you would be empowered to do the things that God has purposed for us to do. You know what grace is? You know what grace is? Grace is God giving us the ability to do everything that he's purposed for us to do. Let me say it again to you. Grace is divine ability that God has given to us to do everything that he's purposed for us to do. And so everybody is without excuse because the grace of God has appeared to all men. There's nobody on that day who can stand before the Lord and say, I didn't know. There's nobody on the day who said, my preacher said. Huh. Because he says the anointing which he has given us, I'm going to read it one more time and I'm going to get ready to close. I don't feel like closing because there's a whole lot more that you need to hear. There, there's a place of consecration that I want to call God's people to. I want to call us to. I want us to be ready to embrace. I, 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 I pray that you'll be ready to allow the move of God to take you to where the, you st we start off on Sunday morning at 1030 and end the next day at 1030. And you'll have to make some explanation at work why you're late. There is a place where you don't need sleep in God, at least for a while. There's a place where you don't need food in, in God, at least for a while. Just so that you can get jump started, as it were, just so you can understand that there is a place of life that you can dwell in, that we can live in, that Father has, Father has done everything possible to convince us. You don't, have to, you don't have to go off into an abandoned place where darkness and the powers of darkness can take control of you and begin to rule over you. He stands ready to fill us in every part and every dimension of our life and the anointing which we've received of him. I want to read the whole thing. But the anointing which we have received of him abides in us. And we do not need that any man teach us. And, and John is addressing it to them like this in his introduction of revealing the eternal life that was with God and was manifested unto him who, whom he saw with his eyes and handled with his hands. He says, the anointing has been given to you. You received it from him. And you don't need that any man teach you this one subject, this one fact, this one truth, this one reality, but the same anointing which you have received of him teaches you all things and is no lie or no deception. There's no deception here. You know, the Holy Spirit has come to lead us and guide us into all the truth, not some of the truth. There's no deception in him. If we're willing to simply walk as, as, as children, as we're willing to be converted and become like little children, if we're willing to desire the sincere milk of the word as newborn babes, we're willing to be that abandoned to him and quit knowing so much and figuring everything out and trying to understand it through our own perception, limited understanding. It says to us, even as, it is ta even as the anointing has taught you or even as he has taught you, you shall abide in him. This is the message. This is the message. God says, Jesus says, come dwell in me. 
Come abide in me. The Lord named this ministry this and put this on our heart because it's the mission. It's the anointing. It's the purpose. It's the, it's the voice that he placed on the inside of me. It's the call of God. It's a prophecy day in, day out. It doesn't change. It doesn't need to be another prophecy. It doesn't need to be a list of things. God's got one purpose. It's one call. Solves all the problems. It deals with all the issues. It's the heart of everything that is, is, is there revealed in Christ Jesus. Come dwell in me. Come abide in me. And let me abide in you. If you'll let my word abide in you, then I'll produce faith on the inside of you. You'll ask whatever you will. So many people will not let God, so many God's people, I'm not talking about the lost, so many God's people will not let God's word abide in them. They'll let every doubt and every imagination and every fear and every worry and every torment toss them to and fro, back and forth, constantly overwhelmed with imaginations and fear. Hey, Anna, no. Get up, come here. You're going to have to straighten up. You've not been in church enough. Okay, baby? Okay, now listen. Everybody, we love you. You're going to be okay. Mommy. Yeah, we're going to be quiet. Everybody's watching you on the web right now. Remember how you're watching me on the web? They're watching you on the web. Anna. You're going to have to do what's right. Do you hear me? You have to do what's right. And you sit here and you be quiet. Now, I would like to do that to every one of you. But I am going to do it to those who, there ain't nothing they can do about it. She can't leave and go to another church. She can't put a lawsuit against me. She can't go tell everybody how much I just love, I don't like her. I was mean to her in a church. I embarrassed her in front of everybody. Her, her behavior's wrong. And it's got to be corrected. Huh? It's got to be corrected. When our behavior is wrong, somebody's got to be able to correct us. There's got to be some kind of authority in our life. And if it's not, our behavior will continue to go on. And we go talk bad about people all we want. And we can say how we've mistreated. All this nonsense. Reality of it is, it was for your good. Yeah, true. Yeah. Reality of it is, Father chastens those whom he loves. And he, and, he, and he does so through the ministries that he's ordained. The ministers that he's ordained. If they're God's people, huh? It's not. I'm going to tell you right now. A wolf in sheep clothing will tell you what you want to hear and make everything just fine for you. A shepherd's got a, got, a, got a rod with him. A wolf in sheep clothing has no rod. Has no rod. Doesn't exist. A shepherd has a rod. And he doesn't leave when things get rough. He's there. Hallelujah. And he's going to put his hand right in your wound. Amen. Because you got to do that to fix them up. Believe me, I know. And we get real intimate with our creatures. Because you need to. We find out what's wrong with them. Amen. Father wants us to be that way. And you got to have love. You got to have love. You got to have love that produces trust. You got to have love that produces relationship. You got to have love that produces confidence. You got to have love that produces unfailing, unending covenant. You got to have love that produces a bond that sticks forever. Hallelujah. There's nothing as important as love. It's chief among all that Father demands. It fulfills all that he's ever asked. It fulfills all the law. It's the place where faith springs up. It's a place where fear leaves. We have a faith that works by love. A love that casts out all fear because fear hath torment. And we haven't been given the spirit of bondage to fear. If you've got fear, it's a spirit of bondage that you've allowed to come and invade your life. You've been given the spirit of the Lord whereby the spirit of the Holy Spirit Spirit of liberty, freedom, freedom from all that is in this world, all the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. So that you say, Dad, God is my dad. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ha, my grandchildren are invading the platform tonight. I love them dearly. Love you dearly. Love your grandchildren. I'd like to get into your life like I get into my grandchildren's life. I would. If some of you really need some serious talking to. Huh? But we want to be patient with you because we don't want you to just get up and run and leave. Huh? 
Anna can't leave. She can run, but she can't hide. I mean, none of my kids can leave because I'm still their daddy. <laughs> Hallelujah. I never finished verse 28. I got to finish 28. I love camping around the word. I love the rest of his presence. I love the peace that his presence brings. I love the blessings that the, that the confession of his word and the proclamation of his word produces. I love his manifest presence. We want you to just get so caught up in it. Well, I preach to you and correct the grandchildren. <laughs> and now little children abide in him. Dwell in him. Live in his life. Live in the life. Live in him. I pray in Jesus' name that that sounds like a, a, the most awesome thing that you get privileged to do. God has empowered us. It's not like it's a command. It's, he's empowered us. He's given us the privilege. You're kidding me. It's the access. It's that which holy men of old sought to understand and they could not. Wanted to hear and they never heard it. And he says to you and I, come on in. Dwell in him. That when he shall appear, you may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. There is there, the confidence that Father wants us to have. You can't let it slip. You can't cast it away. I'm going to say one more thing here because it's so important for all of us to get it. The Lord says in verse 18, forgive me, verse, verse 16, and we have known and believed. This is the revelation comes from heaven. This is what Father wants to convince you of tonight. We have known and believed the love that God has for us. Whew. Paul, I mean, forgive me, John got to see it in a, radically, in a radical way, in a radical display that none of us have gotten to see. He was the only one standing there that Jesus dropped, tripped with the blood of redemption until every bit of life flowed out of him. He stood there. The display of love before him. Display, the display of love that he came to testify of when he said, we have known and believed the love that God has for us. Look, he spared not his own son, but offered him up for the sins of us all. How shall he not also by him freely give us all things? If you've got confidence in the blood of redemption, if you've got confidence in the Savior, if you've got confidence in God's love that was so displayed for you, you can have confidence in that, that he's going to supply everything that you have need to do what it, need of to do what it is he's requested of you. You can have confidence tonight to know that that life, that wonderful privilege of dwelling in him and knowing that he dwells in you is, is, is present. It's a reality. We want you to get this. We want you to get out of yourself because that's a terrible place for you to live. Come on over into the glory. Come on over into the star of Ishi. Come on over into this realm of the star of Borosay. The severity and the kahapatea. Father's rejected no one. There's no one to cast out on the outside. Everybody's invited in. If you're cast out and on the outside, you cast yourself out. You bait yourself on the outside. Because the Lord invites everybody to come on in, those who are near and those who are far away. We've known, believed the love that God has for us. That's who he is. God is love. He ain't anything else but that. He's uncompromising love and ain't going to have any hate in it. If somebody said if God was so love, for loving, he wouldn't have created a hell no you don't understand he created a hell for the devil and his angels he's so loving he's not going to have any hate he's not going to have fellowship with hate and if people want to stay in hate it's their choice God does not force any men's will if people want to stay in fear and turmoil and darkness and death they get to choose it it's about time God's people quit choosing it 
I've watched more people bring great troubles upon their soul because their, their mouth started talking against God's people or the anointing. Who should lay any charge to God's elect? I tell you right now, I'm God's elect. I don't know who you are, but I'm God's elect. It's God who justifies. He's the one who's made me righteous. I'm in him, and he's in me. That's something that's got to be a reality for you. I can't make that a reality for you. It's made a reality for me out of, out of, the, out of the volition of my own will in response to that which he's done for me. But I've watched more people create more troubles for themselves just talking, just spinning their opinion, their complaint, declaring what's coming out of their imaginations of a suspicious mind. Or of a self-interest mind. Whatever, stop it. Don't do that. If you just let this love of God abide in you, you just, if, you just, if you just dwell in Him, let His Word dwell in you, everything get good for you. Everything get good for you. You're going to have to start practicing speaking only the Word. You're going to have to get up in the morning and say, I understand today, Father, that I do not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceeds out of your mouth. I understand today, Father, the most important thing that you have for my life and that you want for my life is that I'm filled up with your love and walk in your love. And I know that your love has been poured into me by the Holy Ghost and that all I have to do is ask the Holy Spirit and yield to him and your love will flow freely through my life. Just real simple stuff, relationship stuff, dialogue stuff. Huh. You know, beginning to recognize that he's there instead of walking around silently. Can you imagine going all day long? you just hanging out with somebody and they don't say a word. They don't even recognize, they don't acknowledge you. Just stay with you. They're with you about two steps behind you all day long. Sit down to eat with them. They just kind of stare off into space. And you st right up top of your head. <laughs> Come sit down on the couch with you. Turn on the TV. Act like they're not even there. We got to know. It's just, just time we just stop treating the Holy Spirit that way. It's time we start acknowledging the Lord. Start interacting with them. Things that get ri rich for you. They get rich for you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, I open up this book, and I just start getting all these verses of Scripture standing out to me. And I want to go over and read this one and go over there and visit over there. And somebody said, how is it that you got always got something to preach on? Man, are you kidding me? <laughs> I got a, I got a, I got a book full of the words of God and a heart full of the, His Spirit. Hallelujah! Goodness, we can preach all day long, every day, and people need it. I'm going to just tell you quickly: you got to make commitments. If you're saying you're going to dwell in Him and abide in Him, you're going to have to make commitments and live by Him. You need to be in church every time. I tell you right now, you need to be every time in the things in the move of God. Those things which are going on in this place, they are here so that you might learn how to dwell in Him and abide in Him. You got to recognize that when you continually decide to prioritize and make other things important, and for all the excuses, huh? I got a toe. I got a toe ache tonight. I can't really. It really is uncomfortable for me. I just don't feel like. I'm, I just don't feel very happy tonight. Pastor's going to be all upset because I'm sad. You're right there, but nonetheless, <laughs> there's no excuse not to come. I'm going to be upset because my heart's united with the Lord, and He's upset because people are sad in His presence. We better get joyful. Amen. But on and on. You have to make principles. You're going to have to put principles in your life. You're going to have to say, listen, I'm going to abide in him. I'm going to live in him. I'm going to dwell in him. I'm going to recognize things that are just clearly the acts of not living in him and dwelling in him and just doing my own thing. Because if you don't, you're never going to get anywhere with God. It's all going to be off there. You're going to have a perpetual backsliding state. Huh? I want you to just get this. Down. I want you to get simple. I love to get practical with the Word of God. The Lord says, Phew. "Look at how easy it is to dwell to dwell in God. Look how easy it is. how easy it is. It's a choice. See that? Did you see that's a choice? He that dwells in love dwells in God. Huh? It's just a choice. Is that beautiful or what?" You don't have to fast for 40 days and 40 nights without food or water <laughs> to get to dwell in God. You just choose, I'm going to stay in this, I'm going to stay up here in love with my spouse, with my children, with grumpy pants. <laughs> you 
And people say, oh, well, she's just tired. You know, people just, you know, you know have you ever noticed that? Somebody's short or grouchy, turn this down some. That means turn it down. People are short or grouchy, you know, and they go, oh, well, I'm just tired. That's no excuse. People always want to make excuses for wrong behavior. Don't do that. Repent. Just say, you're right. Lord, forgive me. Please forgive me. Say, oh, well, you know. Jesus, help us. So easy. It's so easy to be blessed. It's a choice. It's not based on your circumstances. You can be in a pit, in a prison, in a dark pit. You can be happy. It's a choice. You can find yourself dwelling in God and filled up with all of His goodness. It's a choice. When you make things and circumstances the means by which you get happy, they are your God. If I have this, then I'm going to be happy. That's your God. That's where you draw your life from. Because when we talk about happiness, we're talking about drawing life, value. She's going to help me preach here now. <laughs> Hallelujah. She said, my daughter, my granddaughters, they're going to prophesy. They prophetess. I'm, I'm telling tell you right now, mom and I, we cry out to God for our children, for our grandchildren. We bring them before the throne of grace and know what Father's purpose to do with your life. And when Father's given us power to smash Satan and we, we smash the devil and we, we make a, a thorough work of it and a purpose to do even a better, complete job. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You, and I say, that for you, I say that for your sake, that you come and follow us in our righteous cause, that you come be stirred up with the same, the same kind of zeal of the Lord that he's placed in a heart because this love is there. He that dwells in love dwells in God. God is love. And God in him. Isn't that amazing? Is that amazing? Is that amazing? How easy is that? It's pretty hard, isn't it? When you want to say something bad about something because some... Or someone because it just didn't work out for you. It just didn't suit you. It just didn't meet up to what you purpose to have out of the out of the deal. You didn't get your cut. Your fair share, your fair shake, huh? Your acknowledgement, your wink, whatever, your pat on the back or whatever. That's when it gets hard to dwell in love, right? But if you choose to then you dwell in him and he dwells in you. Just that simple. And, I just, and I'm dependent upon the Holy Ghost to do this because I can't do it. Somebody aggravates me. I say, Holy Spirit, strengthen me right now, please. Help me, Lord, before I say the wrong thing, do the wrong thing, act the wrong thing. I made a deter I've determined I will not respond out of the heat of emotion, out of the heat of the circumstances. I'll wait until the love of God overwhelms me and then I'll speak. Whether it's an email, conversation. No, I'm going to be led by the Holy Ghost. And if I'm going to be led by the Holy Ghost, more than likely, every time, I'm going to have to deny me. And you're going to have to face it. If you want to dwell in Him, you're going to have to face it. You're going to have to come to terms with it. How much do you want what He's got to give you? You have to deal with it. Here and is our love made perfect. Whew. Obey his word, your love is made perfect. Love one another, your love is made perfect. Stay, just know and acknowledge his love. Know and believe his love for you. Stay there, here is your love made perfect. So that you may have boldness in the day of judgment. There it is again. So that you won't be ashamed before him when he, when he appears. So that you may have confidence whew, and not be ashamed before him when he appears. I won't be ashamed. I remember one time, let me just tell you this, and I'm, I'm trying to close for you. I'm trying to let you know that we're not going to be here all night. <laughs> you 
You know, I've had different encounters with God. And there was times in my life, early in my life, where some of those encounters with God, every sin or everything that was a compromise that I was allowing going on in my life stood before me and I became very ashamed. Very ashamed. The beautiful thing of it is, is I was able to fall down before him and say, Lord, I give my life to you. I'm not allowing these things in my life anymore. Strength me. It's wonderful. It's wonderful to have confidence towards God. If we just obey Him and keep His commandments, then we'll have confidence towards God. Our heart won't condemn us, and we'll have confidence towards God. The worst part of sin, the worst part of, of shortcoming is, is this, thing, this thing that would mess with our confidence towards God. Praise God for His blood. Praise God for redemption. Praise, praise God for forgiveness. Praise God for fresh starts. Praise God for a new beginning. Praise God for His mercy that's new every morning. Praise, Father, praise God for Jesus, whoever lives to pray for us, intercede for us. When you, you say, please pray for me. I had a brother call me up the other day. He said, please pray. He's a man of God, wonderful man of God. He says, please pray. Because he has a, a, a respect for me. A sense that that's valuable. Just think about this. Jesus is praying for us. Dear Lord Jesus, please pray for me. You don't even have to say that. You just say it rather. Lord Jesus, thank you for praying for me right now. When does he stop praying for you? He ever lives. He forever lives to make intercession for the saints. Those that he sanctified by his own blood. Tonight, just decide whether or not you're sanctified by his blood. Set apart, call to him. Purpose to learn to live in all of his ways. To turn your back on sin. To walk with him. To follow him. As a newborn babe, to desire the sincere milk of the word. To live by it. To speak it. To think it. To do it. Mm -mm -mm. His goodness never fails. Hallelujah. Here it is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Why? Because as he is, so are we now in this world. How are we now in this world? As he is. He's not of the world even as we're not of the world. We're not of the world even as he's not of the world. Just as he is, we are right now. Why? Because he's in us and, he's, and we're in him. And that's the bigger part of it. That's the bigger part of holiness. The bigger part of holiness. <laughs> you know, we just dealt with that cough, didn't we? You gagging yourself now? The bigger part of holiness is just being willing to dwell in Him. Being willing to live in His life. Being, not being willing to be without Him. And when that's, heart, when, that's, when that's your heart, you know what's going to happen to you? There will be no disobedience, no sh sin that will be worth the shame. Because it always has a shame before him. And Adam went and hid because he was ashamed because he knew he was naked. Huh. It are, I'll tell you right now, to cure you. Huh? It'll cure you. It'll cure you. Praise God for the cure. Jesus is the cure. The Holy Ghost is the cure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's no fear. No fear. No shame. No condemnation. No guilt. No displacement. No otherness. In love. Hallelujah. We're in him, he's in us. And he's the one who made the agreement. And it was his a decision. And it was the act of his choice and his purpose. And he's the bond of it. And he's the power of it. He's the miracle of it. Not you and me. Here in his love. Not that we loved him, but that he loved us. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? Can't you get confident there? 
cast not away your confidence. It, it has a great payday. Hallelujah. It's got a great, great payday. Great rewards coming to you. Perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. Condemnation is tormenting, isn't it? Shame is torment, isn't it? Huh? Guilt, failure, reproach is torment, isn't it? He that fears is not made perfect in love. Everybody, I want you to stand with me. He that fears is not made perfect in love. I want you to listen to this. Touch my baby, Lord Jesus. Touch her right now. He that fears is not made perfect in love. Hey, listen to me. Hear this? He that fears is not made perfect in love. You can go out here feeling bad about yourself now? No, you praise God for your Redeemer, your Savior, your Perfector, your Provider, who perfects everything that concerns you. Now you've got to be willing to be devoted to it. Otherwise, if you don't change your mind, if you don't, make it, if you don't consecrate yourself to it, if you, don't, if you don't commit yourself to it, nothing ever changes. It's a walk, and that's movement, and that's going somewhere in a direction to a destination. Yep. And then this next verse, we love him because he first loves us. <laughs> Do you just talk to the Lord like that? Lord, I just thank you that you first loved me so that I can love you. I thank you that you love me right now so that I can love you back. Satan is always saying the words that Job's wife said to him. Oh, just curse God and die. <laughs> Satan's, oh, that's just Satan. It's the intercession of hell. Oh, just give up. Give up. To what? For what? Now what are you going to do now that you've given up? Everything Satan says is stupid. It doesn't make any sense at all. It doesn't make any sense. One day, Anna was telling me, Papa, that's silly. I said something. It's wonderful to be told that you're silly by a three-year-old. Papa, that's silly. Papa, that's stupid. Because her dad was trying to help her understand certain things are just ridiculous. Don't say them. So she just decided Go ahead, see if she's been getting it. She's going to go ahead and get it. <laughs> That's the tragic thing. What you receive is what you usually give. <laughs> and we just want you to receive a bunch of love from heaven instead of a bunch of hate from hell. We want you to receive a bunch of love from heaven, <laughs> a bunch of love from the Holy Ghost instead of an overwhelming sense of torment from demon spirits. I want you to receive a bunch of love from Father, a bunch of mercy from Father, a bunch of grace from Father, so that you can just give it. We want you to get it freely. We don't want you to earn it. Because then you're going to make everybody else earn yours. Ah, I love you, but you got to earn it. You got to prove you're worthy. Deserve it. We trespass and trespass again and again and again and again. And he doesn't take the disposition. Well, I'm just going to watch you for a while. And then when I'm convinced you're really real, that you've changed, that you're deserving, then I'm, you know, I'm going to put you on probation. Oh, God, thank you that you're not that way. Thank you, Father, that you just who you are. You're amazing, and we love you so much for who you are. We thank you, Father, that we're so privileged to get to be like you, that we don't have to live in a world full of lust, people doing all kinds of nasty, twisted things, hating one another, despising one another, living in shame. Father, we thank you that your love is so great that even those who live in such conditions, deplorable states, you reach out to them every day. 
I believe that God reaches out to homosexuals every day. I believe God reaches out to adulterers every day. I believe God reaches out to murderers. I believe God reaches out to sex traffickers. I believe God reaches out to those people who abuse men and abuse women. That are still children. Goes on every day. Steals them and sells them into a slavery as a house servant. Goes on today. People think it doesn't go on. It's going on all over the place. And parents sell their children for money. Father's love reaches out to them. We would never reach. Some people would never reach out to them. They, they can't. They can't. They can't get past the offense. They can't get past that kind of wickedness. God reaches out to them. There's not a man tonight or a woman tonight on death row that God's not reaching out to, that the Holy Ghost isn't reaching out to. It's just that they're overwhelmed with their guilt and their torment. They can't get past what they've done wrong, the way that they've been abused. Father wants to teach us his love so that we can begin to shine as a light to a lost and dying world. But there's no way that he's ever going to be able to teach us his love until we decide we're going to abide in him. Until we're going to decide we're not going to live without a moment without his life. And it's not a religious ideology. It's an expression of divine power surging through our spirit and our being. With the very life of the Holy Ghost. With the very expressions of his nature and of his goodness. God is so good to us. Father, I thank you right now that you heal the spirit. You heal the body as well. Father, I thank you tonight that you erase all the sin and all the shame from off the life of those who trespassed against you. Father, tonight we pray in Jesus' name that there would not be one person in here who would refuse to respond to your love. But just take the blood of Jesus now. Just take the blood of Jesus now. Just take his blood for cleansing. Listen, anybody that wants me to pray with them for them, I want you to come right now. I don't care what the problem is. I could start calling people out. I'd rather you come. I'd rather you come. If you've got a hurt in your heart, if you've got guilt in your spirit, if you've got shame in your life, if you've got sin, if you've been backslidden, if you've been, way, if you've been wayward, if you've not been committed, if tonight you want to get things right with God. If you're not certain that everything is right with God, you need to come. You need to make it right. You need to say, tonight's my night. I'm going to do these things tonight. Because I'm going to come to Father, give myself over to Him, and allow Him to run my life, and, and I'm not, I'm, instead of me ruining it. You got one or two choices. You can either ruin your life or let Father run it. And he's going to bless you. Papa wants to develop you in confidence and boldness and certainty. Your sister, wait, come here. I'm proud of you. Allison? Allison, are you, are you, you're not from here. Are you from New York? Yeah. Okay. Well, nice to meet you, Allison. I'm Mark. You, need, you know the Lord loves you. You know he, he, He's touching you. He's calling you. Look, there's not really a whole lot to give up. There's a whole lot to gain. So just, you know, so just let, him, let, him, let him take hold of your life. Let him take hold of your life. Let him change you. Let him show you how to do it. There's no place that you can create in your mind of where you're going to start with him. You just got to surrender to him. It's just that simple. And then it's day by day. You cry out for a Savior, 
Christ Jesus is the Savior, and he'll come deliver you. That's who he is. That's what he does. He's the deliverer of men. That's what it means to be the Savior of men. He's the deliverer of men. And so, I mean, I, I call you up here to embarrass you or anything. I just, I looked at you and I saw the Holy Ghost dealing with you. I saw the Spirit of the Lord on you. So I started actually to call you out. And I just waited. You know, I just called everybody, but then and the Lord wouldn't give me any rest on it. So I'm here to tell you, God has a call of His love and His grace on your life. And all you have to do is just give in to Him. He'll make everything wonderful. He'll make everything good. He'll change everything. So, Father, we pray right now in Jesus' name that every stronghold of the enemy, that everything contrary to your will and your way would not be able to work as deception as power anymore in this life. In Jesus' name. Father, we ask you to grab a hold of Lindsay's life. Jesus' name. Satera Sanaya Tikamaya. Sabera Siti Namasatay. Bokadera Nest. Bokadaranaya. Right now. Every stronghold of Satan, every power of darkness. I command you to loose right now. I'll break your claim off the Lindsay. Father, we thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. Basa tera nesi. Basa tera nea pakalayest. Basa tera nisi pere de. Barana sayatist. Bivre vata. Bivre. A new beginning in Jesus' name. Just lift your hands towards heaven. Let the Lord touch you. He loves you so much. Just. He loves you so much. Ah, Satanayati. Ah, Satanayati. It's not hard to walk with the Lord. The way the transgressor is hard and hard to walk with the Lord. Fear has altogether lost its power over you. <laughs> Fear has altogether lost its power over you. Darkness that has no claim. No beautiful, no wonderful. It's belonged to Father from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. Just say that, just say that with me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. I love you. Try that on a little bit more. Jesus, I love you. Jesus. You almost got to always sing it. You know, he comes singing. His voice is, is the sound of a trumpet. Jesus. Jesus. I love you. Just keep telling him that because it won't be long you hear him say, I love you too. And everything really gets, everything really starts getting good. How are you doing? Okay. Father, I thank you for your blessing upon this life. Healing from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. No sickness nor disease come now you dwelling. I curse sickness and disease. Curse it. Satan, you take your sickness and your disease and your affliction. And you get out of this place. I bind you now. You're not going to come in here and work all this itis in this place. And bite us. Itis and bite us. Conjunctivitis, encephalitis, and all the rest.
Father, we thank you that your daughter and your servant, Anna, should never know sin, should never know the ways of evil, should never know the ways of darkness, should spend all of her life in holiness and purity, walking before you, God, with all this wonderful ability that you've given her, this amazing mind, this amazing little life, Sit down with a book. No, she just, she's not four yet. She sit down with a book. And she reads it. She doesn't know how to read. She's memorized it, every word. She's an amazing little mind. What Papa's going to do with this one pound, three ounce baby. She just don't fit in any other classes, you know. I told her mom today, forget about averages and means. They don't. It. The average and means weren't born at one pound three ounces as a miracle. So at one pound three ounces, opened up her eyes and looked everybody square in the face. Said, Whoa, who are you? Where am I at? Hey, isn't, it, isn't God good? Did you, know, did you know that you hear right now by divine purpose? Did you know that you hear right now by the act of God's divine grace? That you're not here by accident. That you're not trying to ring God's doorbell and get him to answer you. <laughs> trying to get, you know, heaven to pay attention. Hey, don't remember me. Don't forget about me up here. to talk with the Lord in place of faith and confidence. That in the sound and the tone of our voice is that. Rather than sorrow and hopeful. Because much of our prayer has been sorrow and hopeful. Rather than, than, than certain and you know, confident. Holy Spirit, come breathe on me now. There's a realm that Papa God, that the Father is willing to take us. If we'll just hear him tonight, we'll just listen to him. He will take us into a realm of divine interaction and glory that goes beyond anything that you've imagined. If you're willing to step into this place of faith, of interacting with him, believing that he's here. Knowing, believing the things that he says. Be confident of him. And when, when he sees within our heart an excitement about it and say, Lord, I want that, I want that, then he comes and solidifies it in our life. He comes and empowers us to believe things that we couldn't believe without him. To move in realms that we wouldn't be able to move without him. To see things that it's impossible for us to see. We're missing out on a whole lot of heaven because we're willing to live in hell. And it's just time that we say, like, we're done with hell. Done with hell. <laughs> All done. All done. Father, I thank you for the anointing on Terry's life. Great changes, you see. You know what great changes are happening? The great changes are the love in God that produces a great faith and confidence towards God. All, all, that just re, all that results in is an access, you know. Thank you, Jesus. Just to be happy all the time. So I said, well, how can you be happy all the time? Because things kind of come at us. Because you choose to be happy. You choose to say... Well, I'm just going to get excited about the Lord right now. I just got some terrible bad news. I'm going to get excited about the Lord and just give thanks to Him because I know He's the God of the moment. He's, right, he's God right now. He's good all the time. He's my God. He's God. 
He's God in the good times. God in what seems to be the bad times. He's God at night. God in the daytime. Hallelujah. He's God when I get good news and he's God when I get bad news. In Jesus' name. Be filled, be strengthened by the power of the Holy Ghost. To believe what God said. To know that he's always with you. I wrote this song one time just so that people would sing it and get to know it. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He will always stand by your side. When you call, I know that he will answer. <laughs> Truer than a friend, he'll always be. I just hope that people would memorize that, you know. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> Father, we thank you for strengthening your servant Jason in this love relationship so that faith will spring out of it in such a way that he begin to interact with you. Say, breathe on me, Holy Spirit, and know that it happens. Not say it hopefully and softly, but certainly and confidently. Just lift your hands real high towards heaven. Jason, be filled with the Spirit. Be strengthened by the Holy Ghost in your name. Be strengthened. Jason, be strengthened. Jason, be strengthened. Be strengthened. Be strengthened. Be strengthened. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. What you need, what you want. Huh? More of the manifest presence. Want more of the manifest presence of Jesus. You want more of the reality of the accompanying power of the living God dwelling and abiding on the inside of you. Walking in you, moving in you, thinking through you, talking through you. Because that's who he is. <laughs> And all you have to do is just be confident about it. Just be confident about it. Because he said so. You cannot lie. <laughs> say, I love you, Jesus. Just let your hands towards heaven and say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I thank you that you love me so much. Be filled up. Be filled up to overflowing. God says be filled. It's what God says. God said be filled continually. God said, not man, God said be filled. God spoke from heaven by a son whom he appointed heir of all things and said be filled that's what Papa said Father said Christ Jesus said Holy Ghost said be filled be filled be filled speak to yourself Speak to yourself, encourage yourself, admonish yourself. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Speaking to yourself, admonishing yourself, encouraging yourself. The Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. That's what Father says. It's one thing for the preacher to come by and say, be filled. It's another thing to hear God from heaven. Say, be filled. You sitting out there, standing there, be filled. 
Don't be offline. Be felt. With the rapture or captivating. Glorious. Moving an expression of God in your life. That you're just happy to sit and worship Him. Happy to sit and admire Him. And thank Him for all His goodness. Enjoy His presence. Being caught away in the Spirit. Caught away in His glory. Caught up in His love. The trans towards heaven. The gen healed in Jesus' name. I speak healing to your mind, to your body. Peace to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in Jesus' name, by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ, every torment, every lying spirit, every unholy thing, I break it off of you right now by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ. You might freely be able to receive that which God freely gives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. What is it that the Grams want? Well, that just goes from you. Did you know that in the presence of the Lord, you can't remember if you ever sinned? Did you know that? It's like, because in His presence, there is no memory of sin, no remembrance of sin. See, you can't come into His presence with sin, consciousness of sin and condemnation. It holds you outside of His presence. By the blood of Jesus and by the Spirit of the Lord, it loses its hold upon you. So that when you get raptured in His presence, you're standing in the holies of holies with no sense of sin. You can't remember it because it doesn't exist in His presence. So I break the I break all the torment off of you, Satan. You leave the you leave the property of God alone. You're lying, condemning. Slew-footed serpent. I'll find some other words to say here. Tormenting liar. Unholy thing, you. I smash you. Break your power. Might want no slew-footed serpent crawling around. See something like that, some viperous thing. I just come on in. I just say, come on in. <laughs> Father, I pray in your mercy and your grace that tonight that everybody in this place will understand how easy it is, no matter where they're at, to step over into the realms of your presence, your manifest presence. Listen. The more that you will give yourself to participating with the manifest presence of Jesus, stepping out to touch that realm, the stronger the manifest presence will come. Now you're going to have to recognize this, that there will be all kinds of tricks and distractions and obstacles that would try to run interference against that to where that it won't be convenient, it won't work out, you're too tired, whatever. You're just going to have to be, you're going to have to be functioning in a greater wisdom if that's what's happening. Because listen, the more you give yourself to the manifest presence of God, the stronger the manifest presence will be in your life. The more you give yourself to interacting with the living God, listen to me, the greater the influence, the greater the effect. 
of that interaction. And that's the way to church. Tonight's about, oh, really, tonight, or the things of church is all about just getting you hooked up so that you just be empowered, you receive, so that you can live in it, function in it, walk in it, move in it. Now in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. No more spiritual headaches. Huh? No more. Don't be concerned. Don't worry about it. Pray about it instead. Move out in faith and let God begin to work on it. Hallelujah. Shikaraba batari. Shikataraba mama masiti. Shikatara la masti. Shikatara la masai. Sikatala la la masai. Thank you, Jesus. Put your hands towards heaven, John. Just be strengthened by the power of the Holy Ghost. Spirit of the living God that dwells in you. God is amazing. Did you know God is amazing? He's unimaginable. Indescribable. How he's brought his, how he's made a way to bring his Holy Spirit into weak, infallible men and transform us and change us. Is that amazing? What a, what, what a love. Be blessed. Be blessed on that head. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. I command you, in Jesus' name, to be blessed. I command you in the name of Jesus to start feeling about yourself the way God feels about you. I command you, in Jesus' name, to come into agreement with the Father's heart and start feeling about yourself the way He feels about you. I want you to come, I want you to come in agreement with something else. I want you to come in agreement with Him. I command you now in Jesus' name to come into agreement with Father. Ha, 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 ha. To start feeling about yourself the way he feels about you. And I might say it this way. To start feeling about your person the way that, you, that he feels about you. To start feeling about the life that you now have in Jesus Christ. The way that you should. Because for you to feel about the life that you have in Christ Jesus should be the way you feel about the life of Jesus. How do you feel about the life of Jesus? Are you amazed? Are you in awe about who he is and about his life? Oh, can you see that his life's been given to you? And can you begin to feel the way he feels about you? Can you begin to way if you feel, begin to feel the way you should about his life now in you. Then really, it's not about you. It's about him. It's about that which you've received as a free gift from him. You should be all excited about it all day long. Everything changes there. Just 
excited about this life I have in Jesus all day long. Hallelujah. Ah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, happy day when Jesus washed my sins away. Thank you, Jesus. Aha. You know, if you just stay filled up with His goodness and filled up with His joy, there's nothing else has, that is in this world will have any way to get in. There's no way. You cannot put anything inside of a wellspring busting out. It ain't going to be contaminated. When you got 1,000 gallons a minute pouring out of the earth, springing up pure water, just busting out, try to pour something in that hole. You could get nothing in there. Stuff's coming out too quick. Hallelujah. Whew. And when you filled up, you always got a river. Just remember, you just wherever you're at, I mean, this is continually. This is how the Lord taught Israel. And it's a lesson to us. The rock goes before us. Speak to the rock. You thirsty, you speak to the rock. You speak to the rock, Christ Jesus, and you pour forth water, the Holy Ghost. And when you drink of that realm, when you drink of, or when you partake of the realm of the Holy Ghost, because that's what it's all about, drinking is partaking of the Holy Ghost. Partaking of that which He supplies, yielding to Him. It explodes on the inside of you into rivers. Practice. Practice this. This is better than practicing the word of knowledge or any other individual gift. Practice the whole thing, in other words. All at one time. Just living in Him, abiding in Him. Practice living in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Say, he's my rock. He's my, rock. He's my fortress. He's my, fortress. <laughs> he's my deliverer. He's my deliverer. <laughs> In him shall I trust. Oh, praise the name praise of Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> For you're my rock and you're my fortress. You're my deliverer in you, Lord, I trust. I praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Woo. Find a bunch of people, hug them, tell them that you love them, bless them in the name of Jesus. Go to work happy in the morning. Go to work full of the Holy Ghost. Do whatever it is that you're doing. Do all the name of the Lord. Shine as a light. Shine bright.